no end. Yeah, I see that we are live now, aren't we? Just about. I just wanted just to hit about? the button oh, just okay. two seconds ago, a little bit late, ten seconds after the clock. Welcome uh, to another thrill-packed, exciting episode of The Dork Table with me, Flash, and my co-hostage, Gramsy, Grammy, Grammy. Ooh. <laughs> Anyway, hey Grivner, we made it on. We made it here without assistance. We're driving without a license today. So hey. yeah, you want to you want to bot and body these bots and bodies? Or what? I can sure do that. And you know what? Mm. I'm I am going to read this list without a hairnet. Oh, and it yeah. is the eighth of August, the eighth month in twenty and twenty. Do 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 twenty twenty. Yeah. Telling you, man. What's the numerological shit for that? I have no idea. I don't know. I've been finding that stuff extremely fast. Mm. Whatever. Ew. It's fun to check out. Oh, in any good. case, over here in the RLM, right up top, I see Barman, the most splendiferous bot in the whole wide world. Thank you, Barman, for being such a botular bot. I also see Grimner, who is the RLM god, don't you know? And the lovely Moose Goyle, who is his co-host on Freaker's Ball. And those two get wild and woolly, but unfortunately last night I was way too tucker. Oh, it was, it was, I got the, I got the uh, replay today. Oh, cool. Yeah, it was entertaining. Yeah. Cool. But I miss the music if I don't hear it live. So I just get the, yeah. But still. Yeah. mm, the music just makes yeah. it more interesting. Very interesting. I also see the lovely Miss Kate is here from down in the great state of Florida. Apparently she did not blow away with that hemicane interest. I call it a hemicane because it had a boy name. When it has a girl name, it's a hurricane. Okay, rattle and roll. Woo. Oh, don't do that. Oh, shit, because I tried to wiggle jiggle with you and, and I... I Uh-oh. was pulling weeds the other day in the garden, and the weeds pulled back, and now I have a pulled muscle in my back. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? In all fairness, you were told to lighten your, uh, it up a little bit, and you choose not to. So, Yeah. There you go. Well, You're a victim of your was, own stubbornness, little missy. <laughs> yes, I am, because I just, I just wanted to get just last the, the last tomato plant. I just had a little bit more to go. And then that week said, Fuck uh-huh, you. You think so? Yeah. And my back went, Oh shit, the weed one. The weed one. Quit, quit, quit. The weed one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I have an ice pack on my back right now. It's all good. And I'm doing my CBD oil and, and several other <clears throat> things. You know, with a resume like that, if you only had three more felonies, you could run for the Senate. <gasps> Sweet. Well, you know, I. Me personally, I think I would run from the Senate, but <laughs> stop. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> no, you wouldn't. You'd booby trap, and then you'd sit back and probably pick them off with your rifle equipment. Mm, you I, I do have a super soaker. Ah, see, I, I had a feeling. Anyway, so where were we on the who's and what's uh, we are at anti. We ah. got an anti and an anti with a tail. Wow, a double dose of anti. Once we also bitten, got a child twice. pony with the O going on. And looky there, the lovely Miss Psycho hey. is in the titty chat. She's at the Has... beach with the dog. Ah, life's a beach. Shh, don't tell. Yeah, we suffer here in Denmark. It's a communist shithole. Don't come here. Thank you. Um, actually, Rob, that super soaker would probably be full of, of water that I've already recycled. Holy water. If you get my meaning. Uh, that's probably what so, he meant by holy water. Yeah, well, yeah. Reinforce mm-hmm. with your gurgination. Never mind. There you go. In any case, the lovely Miss Dam Van Meter is here, as well as. Duh, 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 duh. I also see Flash somebody making weird ass noises in the background. Greetings, not doing the buzz. Thing. Fellow hoax deniers and mask wearers alike. Yeah, I'm mask an equal to mask or not to mask. Opportunity that is the question. 
kind of prick. Whether it be nobler to have a star <laughs> upon Mars. <laughs> wow. I thought I was out there today. Continue. <laughs> I'm I'm mixing Shakespeare and, and Dr. Seuss. Yeah. What do you think? <laughs> pretty, pretty good. Yeah, that's like my 151 in prune juice drink. Oh. Yep. Mm. I, I call it the colostomy bag. <laughs> Well, with drinks like that, who needs enemas? That's In right. any case, hey, Frumpy Work, I'm here. I also <sighs> see JJ's, no, 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 JJ's, that stilted color, as well as Meister Bra. What are you? Hi, Meister Bra, hey. how you doing? Mm. And looky there, we got some prints in hey. print here in the chat. Not the purple one. No. Not the purple one. Finger Just the printed prints. one. Mm. Rob Woik is also bubbler. here. Thank you for firing up the bubbler and passing it around. That was the freaking awesome. The RLA. Yeah. yeah, next to Barman, our, Rob's our bubbler. Yeah. Yeah, you know, somebody's got to be the bubbly one in the crowd. Barman never sleeps. Rob does. No, he doesn't. And he never you eats know, that's bacon probably or anything. Why, you know, that's probably why Barman is the way he is. He never sleeps. You you have to be a little off kilter for that. <laughs> so Just <fine>. saying. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I also see Trust No One Trust as well. No as. One. Excuse me, Vanna White, the letter, that too, the letter turning bot of the RLN channel, closely followed by Weather Dork, who is trying to blow a little wind up on skirt. Woo, Vanna! Oh, she's wearing fancy bloomers too. Oh, Barman doesn't wear a kilt. Eh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know what? Uh, if he did, Weather Dork would probably try and blow some wind up his kilt as well, because Weatherdork is kind of weird like that. You know, I hear his wind blows both ways. I also see the Ew. Phantom is here, Not as well as PC66. The yes, Phantom is here. Don't it's the Phantom. The Phantom. Okay, yep. I'm done. CC66 and Chloe e. E. is here, as well mm -hmm. as a Cyborgian Noodle. May you be touched by the wow. Cyborgian noodliness of it all. Mm -hmm. The Dork Cakes! Mm -hmm. Hey, Pancakes! How you doing, sweetheart? And looky there, we got some NSIV going on as well as Frumpy. Hey, double dose of Frumpy in here. As well as Kiss. Ah, there you go. <laughs> I also see a Lurky 7. Lurky 7. Hmm. That's me. That's it's like a James, Bond, James Bondish kind of thing. Lurky is my alter ego. I kind of, yeah. Yep. He observes and reports that. and tells me everything that goes on in the electronic world. Oh. And he works you have for Mr. free. Lurky, you have Mr. Lurky because, you know, on your regular feed, you just plain don't want to see it. But with no, Mr. yeah. Lurky, um, everything. On my Flash, somebody, I, I got about five or six people just ah, can't can't read what they write anymore. It makes me cry. It's heartbreaking. Mm. Yeah. Oh, it's terrible. Uh-oh. So I created Lurky so I could read it but not comment to it sometime. <laughs> it looks like uh, Lurky just got flogged five times with an anvil. Cool. Wow, that's yeah. very acme of, of uh, yeah. <sighs> feeling Vanna. the love, Miss Mary. Are you feeling Vanna it? Was, huh? Vanna was getting rough with you. I thought that was Rob Works. N no, Vanna's the one that did it. Yeah, Rob started it, though. Yeah, well, you know, Vanna's just an order follower. Wait till he finds out Lurky's a guy. <laughs> <laughs> I also see Matt WJ two thousand and two, yeah. Mister Snick Snack Paddywhack. Give, Give that dog a bone. bone. I knew you were going to say um, that. Yeah, yeah, we got to push a pencil in. There you. That's a Chloe alter. Push a pecker across the road. Oh. Okay. <laughs> we got some Papa Papa Bon sauce <laughs> also in the chitty chat as well as a smothead. <laughs> the holiest Roger ever. Is here as well as rounding out the crew. Z poop 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 pick. Yeah. Z pick. Z picks is another fellow radio co hostage on the real liberty media dot com. Sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, Z picks Sweet. does the co hostaging with Prince. Yeah, I That's saw right. that. Just mentioning it. Because I knew something for a change. Thought I'd enjoy the moment. <laughs> I actually listened to, no. not last week's mm. 
the week before's podcast, and then it's been a little crazy in Grammy land. Well, then I appropriately named our podcast today, Everything We Know is Wrong, Part 6. Okay, so if everything we know is wrong, then when we know that everything we know is wrong, hmm. are we right? And I started out at Part 6, just to cement, if you will. The idea that everything is wrong. You're supposed to start at number one, A, something like that, alpha. But no, I had to be different and went right to six. You know why? Why? Because it's one fucking letter off my favorite word. Oh. That's right. Oh. You didn't know oh. I was, yeah, sex. Oh, I thought maybe you were talking about sex. Socks. You know, like yeah, song. yeah. I, I figured you. No, 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 no. Please. Blow a hard. saxophone <laughs> is way too much work for a lazy old fucker like me, baby. Yeah, well, finding a Just sock saying. to mm. the stray yeah. is a lot of work, too. Well, Miss Mary, good. then what exactly do you have to say in regard to my title of the show? Because everything we know is wrong. It's wrong, I tell you. It's wrong. Well, and I just told you that if everything we know is wrong and we know that everything we know is wrong, does that make us right? No. Absolutely well, not. Because people do not accept, They don't accept. Well, see, there's the problem. Take this uh, hoax that we've been dealing with since freaking no fucking November of last year and beyond. Uh, it's easier to convince people that this is real than it is that it's not. Because, and I'm going to blame it on, and I've been, I've been watching movies all day studying the virus and seeing it just how, how did the public become overnight so fucking well informed about something so fake? Hey, Miss Hey, Miss Cycles. It's Cycles. Well, that was a quick trip to the beach. She came back quickly. She must want to hear our show, Miss Mary. Quiet, wide <laughs> My quiet little wife. Life's a beach, especially when you get sand in your crack. <laughs> well, in my personal mm -hmm. opinion, I think that the times that I admitted I was wrong were obvious. So I was wrong. There was nowhere to go with it. Yeah. Oh, I, I thought that this is new. Uh, I'm going to take a look at this. Seems like it's real. I was wrong the way I thought about it. Now I'm going to try this. And it worked, but it doesn't always work. It depends on the topic. Ah. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. Like, driver's licenses are only necessary if you are a, a full fucking uh, socialist card-carrying member of society. Then you need a driver's license. See? If you're like me or Rob Works, fuck you and your damn driver's license. How long do you think they can keep you in jail for driving without a license anyway? It's not a big crime, people. Well. Oh, you know another thing that really irritates the shit out of me, Miss Mary, about driving laws? What's that? Well, in the beginning, when cars were first taken on and they made this, you know, legal schmiegel crap, a speeding mm -hmm. ticket ended in an accident. That's how you defined a speeding ticket. They drove too fast and crashed their car. Became mm -hmm. 30 miles an hour or we're going to fine you $200. It, what? So, well, yeah, so, they're, they're right. all revenue generators. So in, right. In my defense, right, I was a smoker my whole freaking adult life when I was driving. Mm -hmm. So I took it that my addiction to marijuana made me more aware of my surroundings, drive carefully or, or be more nicer to the fellow that wants to cut you off, let him cut you off. Where's he fucking going to go? He's right there in front of you. Let him be, let him be in front of you where you can see him, you know, because he's dangerous. That's right. He'll be the first one to the stop sign. Hmm. So I weighed out all these things, and then I flipped a coin and went, heads, I get a driver's license, tails, I don't. <laughs> ah. I'm kidding about the, that flip. I didn't flip anything. I just thought it was funny. Oh, okay. Okay. But when I was with family and children on all these responsibility shit, at that time in my life, uh, everybody was kind of pissed off because it wouldn't 
get a driver's license <laughs> for a minute. And then it passed. You know, they were afraid of me. You know, something was going to happen to me. But they were never afraid to ride in the car I was driving. <laughs> so, hmm. Make up your mind. Well, well, we've been indoctrinated with all this bullshit all our lives. So hmm. a part of me kind of believed it. Must have. Now, looking back, you know, history being what it is, wow, I never had any regard for the the official system. I just kind of accepted it was there and avoided it. Hmm. So that's how, how easily it was for me to say everything I learned was wrong because I physically went through that. Saw it with my own four eyes, babe. There didn't, you go. Didn't you? Oh, I yeah. Yeah. I still go by my mantra. Mm. Everything we thought we knew, mm. we learned from someone who also thought they knew. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the I guess the point of what I was bringing this up for. You know, it how do you know you can trust the source of your information? It's a matter of what? Matter of getting in touch with the bullshit meter that each and every one of us is born with. But we are also trained to tamp it down or turn it off because someone in authorita told us, no, this is how it is. It doesn't matter that you want to call bullshit and it just doesn't feel right to you. And see, that's where, that's where what really kind of irks me, chaps my hide just a wee bit. Because you got all these people that are going, but it got me in the feels. You made me feel bad. And they're totally messing up people that are you know actually intuitive mm. people that listen to their gut when it's telling them bullshit alert mm. bullshit alert mm. they can't say no that doesn't feel right to me because you got all of these other namby pamby whiner butts out there going then they hurt my feelings i'm off ended yes you are off ended mm. shut up there is no right to not be off ended you are more than welcome to be off-ended. Yeah. They, they give feeling a bad name, just like freaking pedophiles give I love children a bad name. They make it sound like something dirty just fell out of your mouth when you say that. Well, because wait, they what? love children. Yeah, that ain't love. Huh? Oh, that, that love. oh, yeah, no, well. You know, it's you know to me every time I say I'm really starting to and probably it's just my bullshit shadow meter going in overdrive mm. and my intuition going in overdrive but everywhere I look anymore it's like you know that used to be a good thing until y'all took it and you warped it cut that crap out well I think that the uh, the advancement with instant everything over the last sixty years. Mm -hmm. It made watching people's uh, made people watching their kids would become uh, too much. They were hey, put them in front of the TV, ah, send them to the this, ah, get a maid. <laughs> um, See, when we were kids, mom just said, "Get outside, you guys are making me crazy." But oh, you can't yeah. even let your kids outside anymore now because they be, be afraid, be afraid, you know, and then somebody turns you in because you let your five-year-old and your seven-year-old play out in the backyard without parental supervision. Uh-oh. Well, then I got a horrible Denmark story for you when I was having my beer today at the street. Well, <sighs> go ahead and spill it. Well, spill it. You're, you're going to hate this one. I'm sure All I right. will. So I'm sitting there having my first beer, and I'm watching this fellow with his two daughters. So, you know, we're 20 feet apart, so I can see them. And they're talking, and they're carrying on, and they're having a good old time. And a little bit later, a big tall woman and a little kid with a, a new haircut with a big yellow pomp on top, dyed yellow, comes about four years old, five years old, comes mm -hmm. running out, with the, and they're, he's with the kids, too, with that, them, too. Mm -hmm. Then the little girls disappear, and they come back with pink streaks all through their hair. So, the Danes are not buying into uh, any of the crap that the media is telling you they're buying into. I mean, not where I'm at. It's just people are, 
they're just having fun and taking their kids out and dyeing their hair and running around buying them ice cream and shit. Elbow to elbow, bumping into each other in the street and whatnot, just like always. So that's my horrible Danish update. Oh, my God. You know, and I saw a video earlier today of Norway and, oh, dear Lord, oh, M.G. Those people were walking around. They were not social distancing. There was only one person with a mask on, and that person was in a wheelchair with a lap blanket, and they were being pushed by someone that was not wearing a mask. You know, it's like, oh, my God, there's people everywhere, and none of them are wearing masks, and some of them are actually holding hands. Yeah. Oh yeah, it's lots of that lately. I mean, it's it's always been that way here, but it seems like now people are going out of their way to be loving and kind to their partner on the main street. Oh yeah. yeah? Well, you know, every time Wayne and I get out of the vehicle when we're going shopping or something like that, first thing we do is give each other a big hug and kiss so that everybody can see. PDA, PDA, look at this, no masks involved either, PDA. Yeah, masks, what a bunch of boneheads. It's a, the fear of what? I'm still trying to figure out what they're afraid of. Themselves? I'm not smart enough to understand how this virus has absolutely done shit in eight months or whatever it's been. Yet the English-speaking world is settling for... Excuse me totalitarian mandates from their government that they voted into power yet. So these these politicians are supposed to be speaking on the behalf of the people. Mm-hmm. And, but you only hear one side of the story or violence reports. You never hear anything positive about not wearing a mask or not social distancing. They, you only hear that, that, oh, see, these people are doing the right thing and numbers are down. It's a bunch of shit. There's no numbers to raise or drop. They're, they're 9-11-ing you one more time. John kennedy you. However you, you know, whatever comes to mind when you go, government lies. Syria, <laughs> Iraq, Iran, you name it, it's out there, you know. Every time, you know, I keep getting told by the, the maskers that, you anti-mask people are so violent. You're so hateful. And yet, every time I see a video of something, it's not the anti-mask, or not anti-masker, it's not the person that's not wearing a mask that's being abusive, abrasive, assaulting. It's the one with the mask. And they're being so hateful. I hope you die. Wow. Eventually, I will. Are you going to hold your breath till that happens? Hmm. I'd like to see that. Hmm. It's just uh, the only good thing hmm. that's come out of the masks is that I don't have to pe- see people's nasty ass teeth anymore. Those that don't brush <laughs> your teeth anyway. Oh, Miss Mary, I don't ah. have to see that. Judgment from the dork well, table. Your dork side. If you don't brush out. your teeth and you smile real big at me, I'm gonna go. Whoa. Oh, okay, that's fair. Mary has spoken. Yep. <laughs> That's it. Huh? You start out mm-hmm. talking about Norway and you end up talking about teeth. Hmm. Yeah, I know. Isn't it crazy? Well, I did see an article earlier today. A dentist was saying that wearing masks is not nece- has really been detrimental to, pe- to people's oral health care. Well, you know what? I, my history is like grim, and I, I found that the, the teeth that got permanently damaged were actually the ones that were worked on. And the ones that weren't worked on are still holding good. Yeah. But everything they ever did to my, you know, dental work, it, it's just all gone to shit over the years. So, hmm. luckily, I didn't have any front dental work. Nobody ever knocked my front teeth out. So I was a very fortunate young fella. Well, you know, I never had anybody knock my front teeth out, but I was playing softball one time. Hmm. One time, <laughs> oh, <softball> Lord. game. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What happened? Well, it took a bad bounce. And, and oh. Right off the tip of my glove, hmm. and then bam, right into my nose and upper lip. Wow. And it knocked a front tooth loose. Shit, I was standing yeah. on the third base line and took a, 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 a foul tip right in the eye. 
Ow. From between third and third base and home, just standing there watching the game and smack, <laughs> fucking knock me down. Boom. The, yeah. Yeah. Poor that poor kid that swung at that ball. He felt so bad, <laughs> but you know, baseball. Yeah. It's it such happens. A, yeah, but it's such a uh, it's got such a good reputation for you know, you don't get hurt very often playing baseball. <laughs> So when it happens, it's like a shock. Something went wrong. What the fuck? You go to a football yeah. game to see a guy get his leg broke. Wow, I didn't know you could put your leg in that position. That looks painful as fuck. Yes, it does. But, yes, you know, does. that's the the saddest in me enjoyed football for a moment. And the pacifist in me enjoyed baseball. <laughs> Until I got beaten in the eye and then, then I thought, hey, I don't like this game anymore. <laughs> it's violent. Yeah, it does kind of hurt. That yeah, so I was a non-violent kind of a athlete athlete in my day because I did competitive swimming. Ah, no contact in that, and if you do, <laughs> it's contact. It's like not good. You don't want to swim into somebody else in a race. <laughs> you get disqualified for that shit. Hmm. Yeah, well, I'm not a great lover of uh, people and social contact in the first place. I've been telling you for years, 150 people gathered in one place is a remedy for a fuck-up. It's you know, a recipe. I can't even speak now. It's yeah. a recipe for a big old thing, Miss Mary. You know, one of those <clears throat> things. <clears throat> so I'm wondering now, hmm. you know, with your verbal faux pas, hmm. Um, are you going to apply to be uh, Joe Biden's speechwriter? Oh, he doesn't need me. He does way better without me. I'd <laughs> fuck him up. I'd t I'd slip the truth in there somewhere and ruin him. Oh, but see, it would come from Joe Biden, so nobody would pay attention. Oh, he'd probably say it all bass backwards to uh, that poor and guy. People would go, "Wait a minute! Didn't he just?" Wow. Okay, I got a serial question for you now, Miss Mary. Now that you brought it up. Cheerio what? Rice Krispie? No. What in the hell is the attraction to being the president of the United States? What idiot would want that job right now? Uh, I have no idea. I wouldn't want it. I even because my mother used to say that she was going to run for president because she'd clean that shit up, and then she decided that you know what, I would be in jail. Which yeah, she would because she would have bitch slapped Nancy by now. Uh, okay, but what I mean, though, is in your area, life is not so harsh, right? You're still fairly what it was before the hoax began. I'm, I'm yeah, assuming that. Yeah, okay. Now, I have that same luxury, but for the folk that don't, that can see a city from a distance and know what's really going on, where would they find the reason to support another presidential candidate and if this is the results of what the last guy did while he's in office, why vote him in again? And then on the other hand, why replace him? I mean, what could the other guy ever do to unfuck up what this guy fucked up? Hmm. See, that's that's a lot of I've I've always you know or heard long, 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 long time ago, and kind of sort of believe it um, that. POTUS, in their first two years, is basically just cleaning up the mess of the previous. And then they finally get around to start doing some of their stuff. And then the last year they spend campaigning. So they really only have one year to do anything anyway. If well, anything okay. well all. you know, my personal belief is it's a group of bankers and, you know, he's just the front man. He takes all the shit for the decisions they make him do. Well, yeah. I don't think I Trump's... Lone Frog just joined. Hey, Hi, Frog. Froggy. I don't. I don't think. From what I've seen of Trump over the years, he doesn't strike me as an intellectual, scientific-minded kind of fellow that reads up on you know medicine. <laughs> Sorry, I, he strikes me as the guy that would run around with Prince Charlie and go look for twelve-year-olds. Hmm. I heard him say it with his own mouth about, well, my daughter, I'd do her. I went, wow, you freaking sick fuck you. I mean, I didn't grow up in a time where you even made a, a, a joke like that about your daughter. That's just wrong. And here we got this guy that's said it out loud, and he's running things. Ha, 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 ha. 
Sure he is. Mm. You think a banker would trust Trump with a fucking decision? No, he's a parrot. He does what he's told. Oh, I got the elixir from Circle. Yay. Well, that's my take on how I see POTUS. You know? <coughs> and then, well. and, and then Tr- um, Grimm's been doing a, a show on Monday nights. He's gonna, he said he was going to take a break from his new pro- program for a bit and think it through. Mm-hmm. But in the, he's done things, and one of them, he had a guy come on and do a little talk on Kennedy, the Kennedy assassination. And within mm-hmm. all the fucking knowledge that we collectively have is the truth, but all of us end up regurgitating a shitty version of the story. It's just the way it is. You can't, you can't even accidentally tell the truth about these things. 9-11, Kennedy... The hoax. Oh well, yeah. And they're so wow, they're so entangled and connected to other things that you have to explain the other thing to understand the thing that you're listening to. So it's not it's not radio. It sounds like there's an awful lot of things going on. It's more than thing one and thing two. See, and we're not geared to. to I don't think we're wired to handle more than one or two things the way that they're presented to us. It's overwhelming. It floods the system somehow. And some people, it floods them so harshly that they don't get anything out of it. Wah, 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 wah. Kennedy, <laughs> wah, 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 wah. What was that? I don't know. Something about a guy named Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm serial. I believe it. I think it's it, frequencies. You know, there are people with eyes that do not see. There are people with ears that do not hear. And they go around ignoring everything around them, except for what they are told by those in authorita. Hmm. So they blindly and deftly live in ignore ants. And they're, I, mm, yeah. But it must give them a social value status in their own mind. They all seem to look down on me. The people that you just described. That's well, yeah. the, the common link is they're all looking down their nose like I'm something uh, like a defective part of the machine when I don't want to be part of the machine. <laughs> I just like want to something sit. that needs to be stepped on. Well, no, yeah. no, it's not that violent. Like here. a bug. No, maybe at home, but not not here. Not these other countries are a little kinder. You know, people still value uh, other people's life because the next guy might save your ass. You know, don't push it. Where it's overcrowded and, you know, fighting and all that territory shit like Copenhagen. (laughs) But here, nah, not a problem. People yeah. just want to get along and go home and watch the big TV set and enjoy their, you know, afternoon time with their family and that's it. No big goals out here. Nobody wants to get rich and, you know, buy the color blue. <laughs> you don't want blue? I I borrowed some blue. I hope nobody catches me. I borrowed some red, too, and I made purple. You borrowed it. Ah, ah, I ah, borrowed ah, it. Ah. I, it. Well, you know, lots of times people borrow things, and then it never comes back. Or if it does come back, it comes back broken. It's like, dude, it was broke when I got it. Really? Then why'd you keep it a year and a half? <laughs> no, Grim. I'm five foot four almost, you bully. <laughs> Grimner says to me, We have to look down on you, Flash. You're only four feet tall. <laughs> no, a little taller than that. Yeah, but there's something about that short thing never bothered me. Oh, God, it would drive everybody else crazy. But I go, What the fuck's your problem? You're short. But they noticed. Consider them intelligent. Yeah. It was a big step. <laughs> yeah, it's like, oh, wow, yeah. you want a cookie for coming up with that observation? Good job. And another thing is, <clears throat> when I was growing up, and there, there was that punching each other crap involved, it was more impressive when I knocked somebody down than, than when they knocked me down. <laughs> well, yeah. Go, wow, and, you you know, people need to stop and realize that short people are yeah. closer to the junk. Go, wow, you knocked the midget down. Ooh, how tough. Uh, and they go, what? Hey, how did you put Glenn Salas down like that? 
swimming. Yeah, well. Oh, yeah, because I was a swimmer, so there was no fat, just all muscle, but small and very deceiving. <laughs> yeah. Well, now I'm old and a little weaker. You know, things have changed over my lifetime. But the memories that life gave me and the marijuana to, to keep those memories fresh, I'm in paradise. Cool. Well, you know, rumor has it that marijuana is a mind-impairing drug. Yeah, so they say. And it impairs your memory. And I don't, I don't know. It depends. It depends on the individual and how much they smoke and what they weigh and what they ate, what they didn't eat, what they drank. See, there's all kinds of things you can do to change the balance and make the lie true. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, that's how we got where we got, Miss Mary. I, am I boring you, dear? <laughs> but I, no. I mean, all the negative crap. How we got here was people telling us through TV and internet and stories and whatnot keep us down like a bunch of dogs. I. Hmm. See, my doggies, you don't, even when you tell them to lay down, they just look at me like, what? What? Now, they do sit very good, but usually I have to have a treat in my hand. <laughs> See, yeah. And right now they're laying down because it's 100 degrees out there. But who's showing you this? they're in the house laying down where they got the air conditioner pulling on them. They're showing you they're smart. <clears throat> well, yeah. They're showing me how well they have trained they have me. Well, there's certain places in the house when it's too hot, Hannibal will um, gravitate towards. So I can always mm -hmm. tell the weather by where the dog lays. Ah. Yep. It's, it's a gift, Miss Mary. I call it observing and reporting. Sometimes I report to me. Sometimes I freely... Report to others. <laughs> you know, they don't care what, uh, but my reports. <laughs> they're, they're not welcomed in the electronic world. <sighs> I'm a sad little dork. <laughs> Aw, man. There's nothing good about a sad little dork. Well, there's either 8 billion stories or there's not. You know, we either each have our own or we don't. And I think we do. But there's some people that don't. They think that it's a collective kind of crap thing. No, it's it's voluntary. Unless you're taken hostage by government and forced to do shit against your will and all that. <clears throat> or tricked or deceived into it by guilt and shame and lies. Guilt and shame and lies will make you do all kinds of weirdo things. Huh, Mary? Wow, that sounds like something from The Wizard of Oz. You're Guilt welcome. and shames and lies. Oh, my. Guilt and shames and lies. Oh, my. You know, I'm waiting for Dorothy and the Tin Man and the and the Scarecrow to pop out somewhere. You're welcome. Uh, I just, it's a gift. Yep. <laughs> I was born this way. <laughs> I used to get in trouble for it all the time when I was young, though. Well. I figured everybody deserved to know what I thought. And they didn't, because I was usually telling them to fuck off and leave me alone. <laughs> That's what it boiled down, you know. If you to put sum it up in a sentence or two. Well, <clears throat> my mother was really big on you know you tell the truth, and if you did not tell the truth, and she found out you were not telling the truth, <clears throat> she always had a wooden spoon close handy, but. She was also really big on not forcing apologies. Oh, good. You know, I think apologies are fake. I well, despise she, that shit when people expect or want me to say you're sorry. Well, why? You're telling me that, what am I, a pigeon? Or what is it, a parrot? Now you tell me a sentence and I repeat it back to you. Do you got to get a cracker? <laughs> well, see, and Mom always said that she never, and she never did, not that I know, never told any of us, now you go apologize. Because she knew if we were sorry or not. And if we weren't sorry and telling us to go apologize, she was condoning lying. And she did not condone lying. So therefore, if you're not sorry, even after you had to kneel in a corner or whatever, you know, and a lot of times people would get sorry, hmm. 
because they got caught. Mm. They weren't sorry that they did it. Mm. They were just sorry that they got caught. Hey, are are you in a mood for a mom report on the radio? <clears throat> I didn't yeah, ask before mom, the show. But. Well, mom went to the doctor mm. on Wednesday after her fall. And I don't know if my sister-in-law asked why they still have her on blood thinners. She should not be on no, blood thinners. No, bad shit. Whatever. Yeah. I think that's why she got as bruised as she did. Oh, yeah. Because they got her on freaking blood thinners. But the doctor saw the bruising on her face when she took a tumble because she thought, I can do this. And then the feet went, no, you can't. And, um, yeah, the doctor said, you will either go to a nursing home or have 24-hour care in your home or I can no longer be your doctor. Which, to me, as soon as I found that out, it's like, bunch of Freaking shit! What the hell? Extortion is us. But wasn't me off to no end. And, and wasn't your niece there when she she was just in a different room, right? Yeah, my niece was in taking a shower. So, oh, right. When, and so she had, she, yeah, she had mom all set up. You know, mom was sitting there eating her supper, and she decided she wanted to go throw something away and yeah. and landed inappropriately. In any case. So There's after, no you know, after I calmed down a wee bit and spoke with my niece and spoke with my brother that lives down there <clears throat> and spoke with his wife who works at the hospital and kind of knows how some of this shit works, hmm. um, I understand the whole thing of, you know, liability and where insurance is involved. She had to say that, but did she have to say it as an excuse? in an extortionary way because to me right. it's like what the hell that's bullying bullshit yeah so yeah. you know between the siblings we have all pretty much decided that yeah my brother the one that's the executor of her estate he um he's already got it set up for medical in-house people but uh siblings in order to save mom some money because it's twenty dollars an hour to have someone there. So basically a 24-hour period is $480. So in order to save some of mom's money, we are going to take turns staying with her. And then on the the days that someone can't come and stay with mom, then, then we will have those people there and <clears throat> they will stay the night. And, you know, that way... My brother that lives in town can go over and pick up mom first thing in the morning and take her back to his house. And then they can be running around or whatever. But Yeah, yeah get her out of the house of a, a little too, yeah. Yeah, well, and she likes getting out of the house. And she likes tootling around. But it's so do we. very freaking frustrating. And, you know, to me, finding out that her blood pressure was low and that they've got her on blood thinners on top <coughs> of it all, I'm surprised she didn't fall before that. Yeah. Because low blood pressure causes lightheadedness, and blood thinners are never a good thing. Doctors, Mary. So, I know. They're doctors. making money off pills, and they call themselves doctors. Yes. And yeah, give a they're... flying fuck about mm -hmm. what kind of health we're in, as long as they get a kickback for the pills that they sell you. Yeah, they don't even have the providers. But they, don't, they provide health. They don't even care. have the decency to say the word "sell you." They, what do they call it? Uh, prescribe. prescribe. Yeah. Well, I'd like to prescribe something to a doctor someday. Uh. Well, I told mom she needs to get her medicines off of the auto bill. And yes, grim doctors are drug pushers, but yeah, it's just. Mm. So I'm probably, I know Wednesday through Friday, hmm. I will be going down and okay. staying with yeah. mom. Yeah, I read that the other day. Yeah. And there might be times I'll go down Tuesday evening. If I don't have a chiropractor appointment on a Tuesday, then I'll go down Tuesday evening and come back Friday evening. Then. Wow. <laughs> Motivated. Well... You know, I got siblings that can cover weekends a hell of a lot easier. Oh, yeah. she But she's a lucky so. woman. She's a lucky mom. Yeah. Especially in these times right now, because people are feeling very uh, selfish and, what's that, exceptional. My, I've got rights to this and that. And 
my life yeah. matters, but you're a piece of shit, that kind of crap going on. Well, and with all this COVID bullshit going on. That's what I was talking about. Mom going, well, but none of us want mom going anywhere near a nursing home. Yeah. So Ooh, that option got idea. thrown out right yeah. away. Yep. There you go. Well, and it was just a matter of figuring out a schedule and making it work. Well, I, so, fig- I figured you might like to at least say something about it. Yeah, so if I'm not around much during the week. <laughs> mm. Now we'll know why. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Not available. And actually, if I'm not inside playing on the computer much on the weekends, it's because I'm catching up from the days that I was gone. And so, yeah. I'll be a busy girl, but that's okay. Maybe it's okay. it's also a way to slow you down so you'll finish recovering before you can damage yourself again. <laughs> I'm serious. Well, you're, well, yeah. You don't yeah. you don't sit still very well. You tend no, to push things. Okay. As an astute observation, one more time, I'm reporting. <laughs> well, I have your best uh, interests at heart. I'm I'm your buddy. I don't want you to get hurt. Yeah, you know and I know I understand. I am a little dooby dooby doo. But see, we're I, grown I'm ups, little... Mary. We're adults, and we don't like being told what to do. You got to find a way to trick us into thinking it's our own idea. Then it's fucking brilliant. Oh yeah. But when it's well, me I, telling yeah. you, you're gonna resist it. Yeah, I don't want to do that. <laughs> oh, I can I can pull weeds just a little bit longer. No, 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 no. You could do anything you could live with, is my motto. And that, well, that's true. That includes self-harm. I mean, if you can live with hurting yourself, then hurt yourself, you freaking lunatic. <laughs> Me, I like the painless route with a big bowl and a cup of coffee. The pain thing and me do not know. No, no, no. And you know what I'm really, really freaking happy about right now in my life? What's that? I learned all about the uh, medicine and the food situation for remedy and uh, longevity. Being mm-hmm. in being in a, a decent uh, state of health. That, yeah. Yeah, that I can do it all by myself. I don't need a doctor for that. I have a wife. She kind of tells me this and that and the other, but it's nice. You know? She doesn't prescribe anything. She cooks it. <laughs> Ah, huh, and you go, mmm, that smells good. She just and cooks. It's good for yeah, you, too. See? So whatever I need, she puts it in the food source, and there you go. And there's always a vegetable or some kind of a, like a pill or powder you can just throw in your fucking food. Oh, yeah. So I got rosehip and I got turmeric, both in powder, and they, mm-hmm. mix, they mix together. It's a horrible taste to it, but... Uh, the results are great. I don't do it because I like the flavor. I do it because I like the results of what I'm doing. There you go. Well, you I go. like it, en- and I learned it from you guys, Larry Woods, you, Miss Mary, the Internet. You know, over the years, people might throw up links that I looked at, and I don't even know who these people are. You know, at the time now, it's been years and years, but... That's why I was saying in the beginning, naming the show, everything I knew is wrong. Yeah. And the things that I, I accept as, I don't know shit about that, I'm always right about those things. I don't know. How did you know? Because <laughs> I'm smart, Michael. I'm smart. I stay out of shit until I know. And then you do what works for you. Um. Hmm. Mentally, For yeah. The most part. It, well, yeah, I've got a. Uh, I wouldn't say a traditional thinking process to everybody else. Mine's a little different. Well, we noticed that, Mister Dorkiller. Right, but I mean, well, okay, but to my fellows in Radio Land, a lot of you guys are uh, similar to each other in some fashion of speaking or communicating. Me, I don't know. I like to be out there in the tall weeds with big pipe. <laughs> Oh. I don't. I thought I was not getting attention that way, but it didn't work that way. I found that out later in my twenties. I didn't understand. I thought being little, I'd be invisible and I could creep around and do shit. Nobody would even notice me. 
Yeah. That didn't work out. That was a terrible idea. I don't know where I got that idea from, but I got cured of it when I was 20-something. Uh-huh. Well, okay, I'll tell you what happened. I'm hanging out with this gorilla that's like six foot three, about mm-hmm. 280. I can't remember mm-hmm. his name off the top of my head now. But he uh, was wearing a big red Hawaiian shirt. Mm-hmm. Standing next to me at like five foot three and a half and 135 pounds, and he tells me that I need to stop attracting so much attention to us. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, well, Daryl, I think was his name. Anyway, yeah. So he he's thinking that I'm the one attracting all the attention, and I think he's the one attracting all the attention. But it was the two of us together that attracted all the attention. So what those two are doing together has got to be worth questioning. <laughs> it's got to be a good joke in there somewhere. Somewhere in there. Yeah, well, we were we were sharing um, an adventure in the marijuana world, I suppose. And some people didn't. You know, they didn't drink or smoke or nothing. So, ah, so basically you guys were the precursor to the marijuana diaries, huh? I don't know about the marijuana diaries or any of that. But. <laughs> well, maybe you could write it. That's just something oh, I thought of. Well, no, you didn't say that part. Well, well my, yeah, no. my wife says I should write a book, about, but I wouldn't know. There's a lot of times where I don't know where I was in certain years anymore. <laughs> it's so jumbled and scattered. Well, that's where you just say, one time at band camp. No, no, no. I'm, I, I and just could... put that out there at the very beginning of the book. Okay, whenever you see one time at band camp, just know, I don't remember where I was when this was going on, but that's kind of my clue to you. Uh, okay, I, I exaggerated a little bit. If I write it down, it might take me a while to figure out the sequence of years and where I was in certain times. But it would have to be written down. It's not something I can do out of memory anymore. Hell. And I lived in some places that, when I lived in, in them at my time, they were one thing. And today, I wouldn't even go as a guest to visit them. Well, yeah. I've been to a few places like that. I've been there once, and that was enough. I don't need to go back. Right, but well, I'm talking 30 years down the road, though, and and from the viewpoint from another country where, you know, it's, it's a hellhole here, here, people. Don't come to Denmark. So, uh, wow, I don't know. I just have to rely on bad jokes and hopefully something will be funny. Because <laughs> real, my real true life is circle and, you know, the neighbors. And there's not, you know, a lot of... Uh, problems or any of that there everybody minds their business in fact we had one neighbor on the other side two houses down just move then mm-hmm. down two houses from there there a, had another house up for sale and the neighborhood's been people been moving in and out of here so the economy's got to be good well could but, be okay but we're in a collapse so it just changed my whole mm, my perspective on the global economy is a lot different now than it was when I was in America or England. Being here has changed it a little bit because I learned about, well, I lived in, in, in Scotland and England when there was the, you know, there were under EU control. Uh Then I came here to Denmark and Denmark's not under the same restrictions that these other free countries are under. (laughs) <laughs> they control their own money, da 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 da. Their borders, this, that, and the other thing. Everything's good. But the mm-hmm. public, when you read stuff about Denmark, it's usually trying to make them look bad, <laughs> like the whaling in the Faroe Islands out in Greenland. See, and I apparently I don't see those kind of things. The only time I see something about Denmark, it's usually positive. So. Maybe I just don't vibrate on a frequency that sees that shit. Oh, well, me and Serg have made a couple friends on the Internet that like to post the negative side of the Denmark experience. 
and I would completely agree with all that shit if I was uh, here engaging in commerce, was a taxpayer and a citizen and had to use a phone to use the train to go to fucking work and all that horse shit. But fortunately, that's not what I do. Ah, the Harleys of summer. Did you hear that? Yes, I did. Tell them like a rice bike to me. They were. That's what I mean. This is Harley territory. The the kids write that. They break them in on uh, little little spitters, little chap spitters. Ah. Oh, these kids here, are, they're freaking great. I, oh, I heard a kid crying today. It was probably about a year and a half old, throwing a little tantrum. But the rest of them, all these people, they've raised these children, and they're young. Some of them are like three, four years old, and they tell them what to do, and they do it. It's just amazing. No crying and screaming, throwing their self on the ground. I seen that in a grocery one day in America. Mm. Kids throwing tantrums because they couldn't have what they wanted and whatnot. And since I've been here, I, nothing. My youngest tried that once. Yeah, good whack at the butt chat. You know what? I was so fucking lucky. I had a girl. I had two girls, but the first marriage didn't work. The second one, I I got this daughter, right? So I spent three and a half years raising this kid. Mm -hmm. There you go. Well, the core the core of your life is in the first two. Yeah. So she grew up with my uh, basic fundamental ideas. But her mom, a statist, decided to, you know, put her through school and all that shit. So, yeah, so she came out with my stubborn streak in the end, right? <laughs> who who would understand stubborn better than me? Ha, <laughs> ha, ha. Oh, I don't know. Well, you take the good with the bad in life, don't you, Miss Mary? I try to. Yes, I do. I don't yes, just I do. don't just talk about it on the radio. I've I've had my shin kicked once or twice in life. Yeah, but I have as well. Yeah, well, but it's usually from another little one. So yeah. Well, I was thinking more of the car accident because you got a physical slap in the head right there. Oh, that, that was that was the universe's way of telling me to slow down, yeah. woman. So outside this, of this, you put so much stuff that in your I want, I want, I want stream, and this was the only way I could get it to you quickly. So <laughs> you bam, down. they go. Well, are you yeah. outside of the weed thing? Are you recovering at a good speed now, or are you comfortable? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Oh, I'm doing good so long as I don't overdo and, and hurt myself. But you can't yeah. follow your <laughs> own. You can't follow your own guidelines. Hmm. It's an interesting dilemma to have. Yeah. Well, I'm lazy by nature, so it's easy for me to start and do a little of something and then stop and go do something else. Not productive. Entertain myself. And then, ah, 20 minutes later, go back and finish what I started. Right. Well, well, I had okay. three months of, of sitting. <laughs> oh, you poor thing. That's right. I forgot about that. Yeah, crying out. Yeah, loud. I could get up and I could walk around. I could, I actually could go do dishes, stuff like that. But yeah, I wasn't really supposed to be doing much of anything. Let those bones heal. And yeah, so yeah. <clears throat> right. It's like, but there's a certain it's like amount. It's like opening of... the doors to Willy Wonka's chocolate factory. You know, it's like, oh my god! And I go running out, and then I get a sore tummy or a sore back or a sore of this or a sore because I overdid it yeah. just a can't, bit. Can't you just walk? <laughs> no. Uh, well, you know when you've had someone put the brakes on you, <laughs> like the yeah. Then you but then you, you've come out of it though with a uh, hmm, more stubborn than you were before. I think. Yeah. Uh, I'm not complaining about it. I'm judging it. You know, as a you're, thing, you're, a recognizable. You're yeah. Well, it's a, I'm aware of it. But you agreeing to it, that still doesn't, see, to me, that doesn't matter. It's great for the radio, because I'm glad you agree. But if you didn't, it would still be the same to me and the same to you. That's the point I'm trying to get to, is we've been conditioned and trained and taught all these things that 
when I sit back and really look at them, the uh, the results don't matter enough to bring on anger or, or put you in that fear the fear mode so you can't see things properly. Where you're narrow yeah. and you're confined. Oh yeah, well look at how politics is all rigged so that you're always when you think about them you're always angry because they're such despicable pricks. So don't support Trump, support Biden. Because he's the lesser of the two pricks, or whatever. This is the story that I hear. Is this true? Hmm? 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 Oh, I don't know. I don't know. I, I really don't pay a whole hell of a lot of attention. You know, my time and my energy and my thought process is, is valuable to me, and that stuff had, holds very little value. Hmm. So I don't give it a bunch of attention. I Man. used to. I used to. It was like, oh, i got to stay up on this shit. But now it's like, oh, the hell with it. I'm just going to deal with what i got going on right in front of me and the hell with the rest of them. <laughs> I know. I'm selfish. Is that selfish. what you call that? Well, yeah. I'm taking <sighs> care of myself first. Because if I don't take to. care of myself first, then how am I going to be around to help others? You know, i got to be up and running before I can help anyone else. Mm. So... Yeah, I'm being selfish. Balance. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You yeah. know who's got incredible balance in this house? The cat? Hannibal. No, the cat's predictable. Oh. Hannibal has balance because you never know what she's going to do. She reacts to life at the moment, no matter what. Well, she can't plan ahead, and she doesn't remember yesterday. True. We True. can. So guess who's in control? <laughs> you know, the animal that has all the deficit really has a, a better quality of living in a lot of ways. Oh yeah. Because you know, yeah, the animals they're not needs... dragged down by all this memory shit. And and now they do have some kind of memory. Like yeah, they've been beat on, but. Uh, or or loved one way or the other. Yeah. They know a pet. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But uh, wow. But they live on a different frequency of stuff than we do. Slower, I think. Right. Mhm. Mm so, or is it faster? Rob would probably know. If Rob's listening, he'll he can tell me what the answer to that is. But the the smaller the animal, the faster it vibrates. Or the smaller the animal, the slower. I think it's the faster. I might have it backwards. Because if an elephant was vibrating real fast, it would probably explode. Probably. D did you know that there is an actual comparison from the mouse to the elephant? No, I did not. You want to know what it is? What's that? I read, Miss Mary, on the internet webs of the world, that in the lifespan of both the mouse and the elephant, they will mm -hmm. both eat uh, the proportionate amount of food for their weight. And it's like, no matter, it, it's the same. They're just, one's bigger than the other, but the numbers match. <laughs> now, did you know what? that when, they, when people say, oh, they eat like a bird, that oh. actually does not mean that they don't eat very, or that they eat very little. It yeah. actually means that they can consume two to three times their body weight a oh. day. Oh, wow! That's flying. Must be exhausting. Take up a lot of power. Well, hummingbirds they have to eat that much mm -hmm. because their metabolism is so high, mm -hmm. and they very rarely land. Very rarely. Right, so the smaller, then the faster, and the bigger, the slower. See, there you go. That's just common, and that would be how you look at it. So, if I'm smaller than you, I'm vibrating faster than you. Ha! Ah. Yep, and I'm getting all those good vibrations, because I'm closer to the ground, and I get them first. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, instead of being one of those whiny fucking... Oh, I'm small and I can't do anything. I just had to find ways to do shit. Oh, Rob said he doesn't think size matters to the frequency. Mm -hmm. Which I, you know, yeah. 
It's still an Maybe interesting Maybe lifespans concept. are shorter. I don't know, but I know, well, you but know what? Relative. Pee -pee has, what, a 48-hour lifespan? Whereas uh, a tortoise is oh, yeah. See the fly. a century or so? Why flies are so good at evading you is because they're living in a different uh, speed. Their world is fast compared to ours. Well, and they got lots and lots of eyes, so the little buggers mm -hmm. can see you coming, right. no All matter if you, you can't sneak up on a fly. <laughs> <laughs> All the abilities, huh? Uh, I snuck up on Hannah again. I've done it twice so far. I'm the reigning ca champion of sneaking into the house. Ah. Nobody else can do it. Can't get past the dog. Hmm. But yet, I can. Well... I can sneak up on the cat. Really? Mm-hmm. Well, when they're asleep, But I, I though, can't right? sneak up on either one of my dogs. Oh, yeah. Okay. But when the cat's asleep or awake? Even when she's awake, I can sneak up on her. Wow. That's... And it, it's funny to see her jump. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah they, I think Dr. Cooper's losing his vision or maybe some cognitive. Like, he doesn't seem to understand the, the door is open or closed or not until I tap on it, you know? And, ah. and he's, like, cautiously approaches. Weird. You'd think he'd run through it, but no. So, yeah, he's he's getting his ears, you know, but he still lays on out of the middle of nowhere, rolls on his back and starts playing with some imaginary string or whatever. Oh, the cat they report. They can see yeah. in different frequencies than we can see. So maybe they're maybe he's actually playing with the ghost. Aliens. Or aliens. Ah, it's music. Those some kids passing down the street here. Yeah, I could hear their music. Yeah. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. I bet that was you could feel it in your tummy kind of loud. No, they're just three kids walking with a boombox. But I have the windows open by the road because of the. We, I think we hit about 79 or 80 today. So with the humidity, it's a little warm. Wow, 79 yeah. or 80. Yeah. I just checked yeah. the temperature out here. It's yeah. 98 degrees. Yeah. It's nowhere near the word in unbearable. If you're, if you're still, you know, it's very, yeah, but it's warm. But it's not real bad. Here, 98. I don't know. I grew up in L.A. It was 100. Ah. Wear shoes. Yes. yes. You know, if you needed to be told to wear shoes, you were dealing with somebody that was really stupid because that was L.A. <laughs> L.A. is hot. Yes. There, eh, yes. I call that. It is hot down there. Well, I haven't, you know, I haven't lived there in how many years now? I left L.A. In, well, I wasn't even in, in L.A. I was actually in the valley. Canoga Park. I was living in the suburbs. Ah. So mm. you're a Mexa Jew from the burbs. Okay. No, no, no. That's just at one time. I that was, This is in the oh. ni late 90, like 98 to 202. Three, maybe 99. I mm. But I know it was there through 9-11 and all that shit. Because I still remember watching it on TV. Hmm. Hmm. What? I was in the San Fernando Valley, baby. Hmm. Hmm. See, and I don't know these places. I I remember California. going to Anaheim and yeah. going to Disneyland. And Anaheim is after in being Orange in County. Bakersfield and going to Pismo. <laughs> Pismo. Sir loves that name, Pismo Beach. It was an it was an interesting place. It was an interesting place, an and interesting I, you know, name. I'm glad we went, but I, uh, I don't need to go back. Hmm. Well, I'm going to call this last bit weird, talk, weird concepts because we really haven't chattered about anything too diabolical. But you know what? What? I think we should th talk about hmm, a good what? conspiracy theory. I've got a great one. What's that? Well, I think that the U.S. dollar collapsed September almost two you know, almost two years ago. This September coming up at some level of finance that it can't be repaired, but the government 
has let the Federal Reserve Bank do anything it wanted to for over a hundred years. <laughs> Just walk all the fuck all over us and experiment well, on us financially. And well, I wait, think that wait. was part of the original agreement. Didn't they have like 99 years and then it had to be renewed? Or they could pretty much just whip me, beat me, tie me up, make me write bad checks kind of syndrome. It came up in uh, 2013, but I was in Scotland. So ah. I don't, but I remember when it came up, the 100 years, but nothing. They, see what I mean? These legal fucking people and these political cunts, sorry, Mary, people, they get out there and they just they tell you what you want to believe so they they can get the job and then they get the job and they do what their owners tell them to do and we all suffer and under the guise of freedom and and the, the freedom is all gone jeez there's nothing left mm. i'm talking about yeah, here I, too I, and i'm talking about my wife because i don't i don't look at her life as being free because she's got that phone. It, you know, it's connected to everything, blah, blah, blah. She can't do shit without that phone. She can't. See? See, and I think, <sighs> I don't think freedom means what people think it means. Okay. I, yeah, I agree with that. But I'm looking at that. To me, that's that ultimate slavery. But to her, it's just way of life. It's normal. She's still well, young. <laughs> it's a tool. Hmm? And she uses it. Tools can be used for good or ill. I mean, I could go out with a saw and cut a board, and I can either do a good job or a bad job. I'd cut my finger off. I could do all kinds of things, but hmm. it's still a tool. Hmm. It is a tool. True. You know, phone is a tool. True. But I still see it as a chain. So my choice Well, is, there you go. Well, oh, see, living up to your word in this world is really freaking hard to do. Yeah. <laughs> Dork Cake says shovels are quite handy. You know what's really nice about shovels? <laughs> and this is one of those things where, you know, if I don't social distance with someone and I go up and hug them, especially after they've irritated me, basically what I'm doing is when I'm hugging them, I'm figuring out how big a hole I need to dig. So, yeah, shovels are quite handy for those kind of things, especially if you have to bop them on the side of the head with it <laughs> to get them to fall in the hole. Too many TV shows, Mary. Way too I many know, I know. I know. Well, I wouldn't actually do that because, good God, I'm not going to overexert myself that much for someone being a douchebag. I'll just avoid them. I was sitting next to Cirque earlier talking about a TV show I'm watching. And mm -hmm. in the show, they it's a gun show thing, fight thing, whatnot. And I, I look at it, and she looks at it, and I tell her, no, you don't run away from a gun like that. You run into the gun. And she says, what's that, the 20 foot, 21 foot rule? <laughs> she's like, She says to me about it, she says, I, I understood that, yeah, if you're 20 feet of the gun, run to it. You've got a better chance of, of knocking it out of their hand than they do of shooting you. I'm like, holy yeah. shit. Okay, well, that, to me, that is common sense. You don't run from a gun. Give give the other guy a better shot. <laughs> I fired guns. It's not as easy as it looks. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I had trouble. I'm very nearsighted, so with my glasses, it doesn't help to hit a target thirty feet away. <laughs> I can't see it. But by the uh, the dirt clods, we could see where the where the uh, where I was hit. Where yeah. yeah. Asmo's here. Hey, Asmo. Ha Asmo yes, was... Modius Asmo. Yeah, he was in there chatting with Moose this morning. A little bit. Ah. Yeah, fun. Yeah, they were having fun talking about uh, buying and selling stuff and whatnot. And I brought cool. up to I brought it up to the chatters in the room. I'll bring it up. Grim, I think Grim's listening. If he's not, he'll, or if he ever hears this. Uh, maybe there should be a page where people can go on the RLM to trade, you know, like a, you have your page for radio podcasts. Maybe you're going to make a, have a page set aside for wheeler dealers that want to buy and sell trade, stuff like that. Maybe it's a oh, stupid yeah. idea. I don't know, but it's, they were talking about it for so long, it seemed like it would get a lot of attention, especially with all the situations that people are in with, you know, local government, <laughs> Ah, and then, the barter and, world. 
Yeah, and then you have people like Asmo. Asmo said he was, he's got a computer waiting for him, but he doesn't want to drive to go pick it up. <laughs> I don't feel like driving. I, mean, I understand that. Jeez. If mm-hmm. I never sit in another car in my life, I won't be sorry because I drove enough, you know. Lucky. Yes. I could be a yes. big baby and go all, I don't have this and I don't have that. But... Nah, Cirque the other day, she's saying, I think I'll get myself a driver's license and buy a car. And I said, no, you won't. Don't do that. (laughs) Uh, See, where I live, it's pretty much a necessity. Oh, yeah, right, right, right. right. Because I'm out in the boonies, and and we don't have trains like you do over there. Yeah, it's different here. And relatives yeah. and friends and oh come on it's it's a small yeah. distance from here to Copenhagen. It's not like we moved on to Spain or anything. We're still local in a lot of ways. This is a lot smaller of a country, so for them to drive from one side of the country to the other take them about five hours. If they do the speed limits and do the right roads and whatnot, east to west, mm. yeah. And then we share a border with Germany on on the mainland of the island. The, there's like islands, and it's really cool. Like Scotland mm. was, yeah. Scotland had island chains that were technically not Scotland, but considered Scotland, like the Shetland Islands, uh-huh. the Orkneys. When you actually mm. live there and you talk to people, they they don't recognize that they belong to Scotland, <laughs> but they're Scots. <laughs> Huh. It was a fucking nightmare. I'm telling you, I was so glad to get out of that. Because I, I did never fit into the uh, the local thing. I was an outsider. It was just weird outside. Hmm. Right? You, you know, it's not translating? Hmm. Well, no, I'm still... I'm processing. I'm processing. Well, it's okay. Okay, but then you got the prejudice of I'm English... So they hate the English already. My mother is English. <laughs> yeah. So they didn't see Mexican, American. They saw English. You know, wow, fuck. <laughs> but the other English on the island, they went, hey. <clears throat> or like Kelly of Mutt from somewhere else. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. She was from Kiwi Land. Ah, down under. Yeah. And then okay. got married in Kirkwall and all that crap. And between the two countries, she had her, uh, her, what do you call it, passport shit. It's just oh, messed with completely by the states <laughs> fighting over her. Oh. Yeah, but she, then she got it sorted and she came to visit me in Cirque. Well, and that that's cool. I am glad that she was able to come over there before she croaked. The yeah. Behind. Well, I don't know. You know, I I can't really say she. I there are questionable hmm, things about her friends and family. So hmm, I don't know. But I don't accuse either. So I stayed out of shit. But I had my doubts about what what happened to Kelly. Kelly was well. the one that dabbled, was dabbling in that freaking. Uh, Bitcoin, trying to get me to buy it. And I told her, Ah. I said, it's all bullshit anyway to me. What the fuck do I need it for? And still, had I bought it, and then it would have gone up like what it hit, 19,000, blah, blah, blah. I don't know if I would have sold it. See? I would have probably just sat on it any damn way. So just money sitting doing, you know, doing what? Eh. I'd rather live then, um, <laughs> see, my whole my whole reality is so far fetched that it's like I make it up as I go. <laughs> well, and I actually <laughs> watched an interview the other day of a gentleman that um, thanks, um, mental from India that there was some kind of you know his when he was or when his dad was young was when India and Pakistan kind of sort of split the sheets hmm. and. You know, so his dad tried to get back into India because his, he was Hindu and Pakistan is uh, Muslim. And, you know, 
long, long, long story. And, you know, basically dad pushing him to be this, and pushing him to be that because you have to be this and you have to be rich and you have to be. And so he grew up with that and wound up being a very rich and successful anesthesiologist. And then he died. Mm. And then he came back. Mm. And then his whole world changed. Mm. That's what Larry says. Because he basically, while he was an anesthesiologist and while he was also a practicing doctor, you know, dealing with people with uh, pain issues, he didn't care. He All he was trying to do was make as much money as he possibly could. And <clears throat> when he had his um, life after life experience, I guess I will say it, um, he met some people that through his uncaring actions... And through his neglect, they wound up passing away. You know, doctors prescribing shit that someone actually died from, you know, kind of a situation. And when when he talked with one of them in that life after life experience, that person um, forgave him for what he did. And he said that was probably one of the biggest changers out of that whole experience because when he first, you know, kind of left his body he got to see what hell was like and then he got to see what a not so unpleasant and that's where he met other and really really changed his life because he said he used to be you know he would check that stock market portfolio constantly because he wanted to make sure that he had all this money and he was very driven and it basically he and his wife because he had changed so much um, they actually went through divorce procedures, but didn't actually get divorced. You know, like three or four days prior to the divorce being final, um, they had gone out for a supper and and done some talking last minute, you know, kind of decision making thing because it was amicable. It was just, and they wound up deciding that you know what, they didn't want to be divorced after all. But it it really, really, really affected his life and changed him dramatically because he saw that the path he was on was not leading to a pleasant place. And he decided to change his life. And he, in turn, changed what he was doing with his own children. So, and I guess the reason why I brought that up was, you know, Kelly with money or with Bitcoin and, and you saying that you probably wouldn't sell it. It's amazing, you know, different things will come into your life that you're not expecting them, but man, they throw a monkey wrench in everything and you can either continue going on the way you are and be an Ebenezer Scrooge that didn't change, or you can be, you can be the one that does change and, and change for the betterment of yourself and those around you. Maybe a shock to the system of those around you at first, but it does happen. It does happen. Well, okay. I I don't disagree or anything. I'm I just uh, wanted to just add we're we're in control of how we interpret our surroundings. And I think yes. in the physical nose to nose meeting other people out in the real world out there uh for most of us we're just nice to each other. Mhm. And then you have your rare exceptions. But there seemed to be a gathering of those kind of people on the internet. The contrarians that uh, want to dictate what others do and not well, follow and, yeah. not, and and not be accountable to follow their own guidelines just to write them. I'm smart. I wrote it down. You got to do it. Yeah. Well, like attracts like, and you do have individuals that you know they they like to be controlling of others they like to be the ones that tell you this is the rules because I'm the boss applesauce kind of shit Mm -hmm. but they don't like it when those rules are applied to them as well and then they get a rude awakening and sometimes they change and oftentimes they do not well are there any physical or emotional ways you feel uh, you're controlled at all by someone outside of me? Yeah, of course. It wouldn't be you. 
Yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, Mary. I have very little elf control. Yeah, I, um, I just I assumed that was part of, I didn't think didn't think that through. All right. Yeah. You got, you no, got me. Um, right? But yeah. <clears throat> Hmm, I can't really say controlled. I can say, I can say, uh, attempt to manipulate, hmm. possibly. Give me an example um, of it. And... Well, you know, like trying to convince that, you know, well, you really should do this and you really should do that. And, oh, that's not a, and, you know, the shame and blamers. Hmm. Or the ones that are going, oh, you just don't understand because it's so complex. Wow. And I, you know, so the wow. ones that, you know, yeah, that do that manipulation bullshit, you know, and, and I understand with government as well, you know, the, there is an awful lot of manipulation going on with those in governing bodies, you know, because it's just so complex and you wouldn't understand. And, and I'm just one of those people that, man, oh, man. I can see something and see a solution that's simple as hell, but I can follow that complexity and go all the way through it and go, okay, now I can see the picture. You know what? This is what it is. And no, ain't buying. Ain't buying. So, yeah, there's there's attempts at manipulation. There's, hmm. There is attempts at coercion. Hmm. But being controlled, mm, no. Hmm. No, I don't have anybody that actually... All right, <clears throat> I was vague. I could have been a thing. <laughs> well, uh, no, no. I feel controlled by my addictions. My addictions. See, and I don't know that I'm. They super. I don't know that I necessarily feel feel controlled by them. I just feel as though I'm acquiescing to them for now, and I, you know, I really think that. When I get to the point where I'm done with it, hmm. then I'll be done with it. I mean, I did that with alcohol. Hmm. I, you know, I was just, I was done with it. Hmm. Don't need that anymore. Ooh. I'm glad I'm not you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still have two beers left from a six-pack that I bought last summer. <laughs> so. <laughs> it's probably undrinkable. <laughs> It could very well be. Use Although it for, it's in a bottle. I don't I don't buy it for I don't buy cans. Use anymore. it for a drain cleaner. <laughs> mm, Never mind. Actually if you use stale beer, you mix stale beer with um like a, a cheapy version of Listerine. Don't get Listerine because it's too freaking expensive. But you can get the off brand of the, the mouthwash, right? Listerine, yeah, yeah mouthwash. Yeah. And um beer, mouthwash. God dang it, what's the other thing? There's three different things that you blend together. Right. And uh, maybe it's just water. I don't know. It could be just water. I'll have to see if I can find my recipe now. So it keeps heaters away. Rob doesn't understand your definition of uh, not being controlled. But I've had the advantage of talking to you so much over so long that I know what you mean. See, and Rob, by the limitation of choice, I understand yeah. that. Yeah. But then again, if I don't know my choices are limited, then am I really being controlled? She's got a loophole there, man. She's thinking Jew shit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, You're like yeah. a chess player. You're all moving four moves ahead. Yeah. Check this out, fucker. Watch the you know, trap and, you'll fall into playing against me. <laughs> you know, and then there's times where I notice that, hey, my choices have been limited. And so then I make another choice, which is usually, well, fuck you. If you're going to limit my choices, I ain't playing with you anymore. So, you know. It's just a matter of how she words it. That's what I was getting at, because it seemed like he wasn't getting the translation. But he does. You're you're very clear, Mary. Yeah. Well, come on. But you think. And yes, ignorance is a choice. And, and it is a weapon that's used. And you think in a very unique fashion that other people don't think like you. <laughs> That's probably I, a good thing. That the, <laughs> the common bond amongst the RLMers that I seem to gravitate towards is that they don't give a fuck about shit. Don't give a fuck. That's the, not the ones that care about this problem and that cause. And, no, I, I like people that go, fuck it. 
Yeah. Okay. Well, I know it sounds kind of strange, but I think that's the common link is some of us have actually let go of some of it. Not all of it because it surrounds us. We entered, we engage it with the internet all the time. So it's there, but it doesn't have that control over us that we're dependent on it. We just play in it. There's plenty of weeds out for you to pull if your back holds out, right? Mm-hmm. There you go. Because I yeah. was watching Living Dead <laughs> zombie movie oh. <laughs> before I talk before I talk to you today. <clears throat> and, oh, I thought yeah. maybe you were watching like a, a, a Trump rally or something. <laughs> no, before that I watched Meteor Apocalypse in honor of Meteor Grimner. Apocalypse. Ooh. Yeah. Terrible fucking movies. These idiots that made this shit. What were they thinking? But I you know, see that sometimes the, I, I think they they intentionally make them pathetic like that. So you can convince the, complete dumbasses that there's a way to die that isn't going to kill anyone. But it's lethal, but doesn't kill anybody. But you could die from it. And there's symptoms, but there's no symptoms. And it's invisible, yeah. but we got a drawing of what it looks like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Suckers. See, that in itself is a teaching moment because it's like, okay, my bullshit meter is going. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I know. And and you can actually, you know, with yours going off like that, you can actually see all of the people around you that that their bullshit meter hasn't gone off in ages because it has not been lubed. It has not been. You know, had the tires kicked on it, it hasn't been <laughs> checked to make sure all the gears are in functioning order or any of that fun shit. So, yeah, and and it is kind of sad to see some people that, man, no matter how much you put right in front of them, which, once again, it's those with eyes that do not see. You know, you can put it right there in front of them, and the yabbit comes out. And I think yabbits need to be an endangered species. And yes, there are an awful lot of Nazis in this world. So, yeah, it's it's it really is interesting. And I I have to be thankful for every person that that makes me go, "Whoa." Cuz I am glad that I don't have that job. Hmm. You know, it's like, oh, thank you for taking on that role. I really appreciate you just taught me something right there. Thank you ever so much. Uh, so. I think <clears throat> I think knowledge is overrated, and most people treat it like something they're burdened with. See, and a lot of times I don't think of knowledge as something that you get from a book. Hmm. I think real knowledge comes from life experience. So. Well, that's because you don't understand what the Holocaust was all about, little Missy. Yeah, I know. I'm one it's, of them not seers. Yep. And that is that a coincidence that that word means not see, not see in English? Or is that a coincidence, or is this all part of this propaganda shit we've been in? Or who knows? It's insane. But what you know one thing I do know? What's that? Everything that they taught me turned out to be a load of shit. Oh, yeah. I don't even think... I think Paul McCartney's really Angela Merkel. It could very well be. Kind of scary, but... So, you know, I'm... I, I kind of live in my own world where I judge shit <laughs> for my amusement. <laughs> Whoops. Bless you. And see, you were talking about uh, believing and not believing and stuff. And there's mm. there are times when I think the best teaching lessons I've gotten mm. is learning something or seeing something or experiencing something that I do not want. Mm. You know, those supposedly quote-unquote negative examples. Those Man, because those will stick with you. Some of them leave a mark. Mm. But, um, you know, it's... I think those are some of my best teachers, is the examples of what I do not want, hmm. where I do not want to go. Really? So, yeah. I don't find that necessary. 
See, and I, well, and I find all kinds of things that, oh, yeah, I want to go check that out, or, hey, mm-hmm. let's go do this. Oh, no, I'm beyond all that. I'm so deep in my mind now, I don't care about the outside anymore. It's just a bunch of shit. Uh, see, your outside is probably different from my outside, because my outside is I go outside and I wander around the yard. I oh, talk yeah, to yeah, the no, dragonflies no. when they fly by no, me. No, <laughs> I've got a little bit of a population. There, it's It's not crowded by any stretch of the word. It's just busy and active. And people fucking walk. And people that walk are crippled with their damn walkers and their canes. And they're still out there fucking walking. Yeah. So. Yeah. They could break down and get to the state and get one of those cushy little cars to drive around in. Some of them do. But for the over the majority of the people, they just tolerate it. They get around. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they want to be able to get into the bar or the store. You can't take your cart into certain buildings. There's no way to get it in. It's too small here. We don't have Walmart-sized stores. This is little tiny Denmark. It's really wild. But, I don't know, the longevity thing is, it's working. And there's a lot of old people around here. So, hmm. COVID, yeah. eh, that's why I went, COVID my ass. They'd be dropping dead like fucking flies. The median age here is like 65 or something. No, what is it, about 40, 38, 40, something like that? Cirque says she doesn't know. I thought she might know. Mm. But it's it's older because there's an older population. It's like a, a what do you call it? A Retirement area? Kind of, but not really because they're deep-rooted. They've been here. A lot of these people have been here. Their families are from here. Ah, so it's so, like a generational thing. Yeah, like, like where you're at, only a lot smaller. Yeah. Yeah. And then the country's not that big, so you can move from one side of this country to the other and be gone a couple of months and come back and it would be like, where'd you go, maybe? But no, It wouldn't be a big, devastating thing because these people all know each other. It's fun to watch. Cool. So far, so good. You want some? Okay. You want some? You want oh, I was some? talking to Cirque. Cirque joined me. <laughs> Here. Yeah, Sam. <laughs> here at the Shh, Hannibal. Be quiet. Hannah, you butt um, nugget. No. See, and, and I'm just amazed my two are just sat out. Of course, it's, it is very warm out here. Yeah, and they are enjoying the air conditioning. So. Ah, uh-huh, we don't even need air conditioning. Well, what? I don't know that my air needs to be conditioned, but it definitely needs to be cooled. Uh-huh. And, and, you know, I'm one of those crazy people. I don't want the... I don't want the AC set on like 72. Yeah. Put it on like 80 and then give me a ceiling fan. Because if the air is just, if the air inside the house is just a skosh cooler than what it is outside and it's also moving, I'm good. I'm good. I need the air moving. I can't stand stagnant air. Well, you have a lot of demands, don't you? Yes, I do. I'm, I'm wow. kind of poo head like that. How, how, how does Wayne put up with you? You're so demanding. Oh, well, you know. Get this stale air air. out of here right now. (laughs) (laughs) Flop the covers if you want it gone. So, no. (laughs) Wow, you just proved that what I said was bullshit. So, (laughs) but, well, you could be a, you know, you could be all Miss Prissy, but you're not. I like that part. Because you're funny as fuck on the damn dork table every now and again, you weirdo. I, I had Wayne laugh and stamp hard the other day. Mm. <laughs> he came walking into the bedroom and, and a couple of floorboards creaked. And I started laughing. He goes, oh, excuse me. And I said, oh, my dear sir, you've got the vapors. <laughs> he had a hell of a time. He's laughing mm. stamp hard. And so he said, women get the vapors. And I said, no, you just did. Uh-oh. I heard it. <laughs> Wait, how do you hear a vapor? <laughs> I, I thought you you heard a snap. You well, smell a vapor. Rattle. <laughs> yeah. Oh. So it's 
So our wow. our code for doing that is uh, I, I made the floorboards creak. I that's, made that's the pretty floorboards much. creak. The yeah, because we don't have any geese out here, so you know it's got to be. Hmm. Yeah. Well, you sure oh, well. make it. You're sure making it difficult to come up with topics on this crazy dork table now, because you're so isolated from reality and whatnot. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, well I mean, the, the collective I reality isolated from the collective reality, but I have there. my own version. Yeah, it's still yeah. out there lurking. Like oh, a, I know it is. But it's not real. Unless you engage it, then it's real. There you go. Well, this is why I have such a hard time understanding all this freedom shit and crap people come up with. Rights. I got rights. Well, wait a minute. You got to pay him for you to have that right. What do you got? <laughs> you got a bully. <laughs> Fuck you, bully. So far, yeah. If you've got to yeah. pay somebody else in order to exercise your rights, you've got an extortionist somewhere, and you're just paying them uh, a blackmail fee. Thursday, you know what happened to me and Cirque? What? We saw the police. <gasps> yep, she's uh, coming in from the city. And I was bringing the dog up to her and going on to the grocery. And as I'm going to the store, I hear squealing tires, and it's just out of pocket. What the fuck? And I look up, and it's the popo. And then, <gasps> yeah, and she says uh, he was doing all that to go give some guy a ticket. So, I'm like, wow, uh, you oh. see? Well, it's Cops. not even the end. Was it at the end of the month? It was, or, uh, no, Thursday. It was just last Thursday. It was just last Thursday. Hmm. Well, it wasn't the end of the month, so I can't say that they were running low on on revenue. I don't hmm. know. It's just so rare for it to happen around here in the first yeah. place. Yeah. I see the cops once every couple of months, six months sometimes. And then other times, uh, wow, it's not really other times, but when they're noticeable, they're, they're always nice to you. They're not mean or anything. Encountering the police here is just like going into a grocery store and getting a pack of cigarettes. Store yeah. clerk, yeah, they're nice. They're nice kids. But if you're driving in the, the car and you got a cop with it's got to do tickets and shit, these guys are a little more edgy. But they're still nice. They're pleasant to the public. So, hmm. another yeah. complaint I have about Denmark is the cops are not pricks to me. Oh, because, you know, I get homesick. I feel bad. I know. It's like, wow. What what am I doing wrong? <laughs> am I so ugly that the police don't want to molester me in my old age? What? 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 Maybe you need to tie a pork <laughs> chop around your neck. <laughs> well, think about how Americans are getting treated right now. What you see on the Internet of it is very, very unpleasant. A lot of violence. A lot of people. See, and I have not, I have not seen that. So. Saw the videos. Yeah, I see videos, but I see movies too. Okay, you know? well, you know what? There's a the reality to violence, and real violence is not choreographed and pretty. Real violence is clumsy and fucked up looking. So. Yeah. When you yeah. see real oh, violence, understand. people are falling, trying to hit the other guy, fall into a brick and hit theirself. So. No, the, this thing I saw with the coffee last week, was well, that was real. The girl threw coffee at these two guys and got her boyfriend's ass kicked for doing it. Ah, well, isn't that special? You know, and, and I'm, I know or I have known some popo that have been just unmitigated assholes. Yeah, what is, it must be something in the training. I think it is, they, and I think yeah. some of it is also in the testing that they take in order to get the job in the first place. Oh, sure, psychological fuck-ups, and plus. Yeah. Oh, yeah, plus they're trained Good by little Israel. little order followers that yeah. have, have this need to Be in power of something, yeah, yeah. Okay, I was empowerment and that kind of, yeah, enforcing. Sure. Yeah. And little people like us, yeah, but you would think little people like us would be 
exempt from these psycho fucking paths. But my history shows me the police treat me just like they treat a guy six foot five. No different. Yeah. And I'm too small to take a b- ass beating by two cops. There ain't no fucking way. I probably get beat to death doing that. So hmm. there was not a lot of fight for me to the police. No. No. What for? I just mind my own business. Mm -hmm. Well, now I'm so disappointed. That keeps me out of their radar for the most part. They don't even look at me no more. I feel so abandoned. (laughs) Make it a joke, Barry. Come on. Well. I know. You're such a short little mess of you that just really doesn't. You know, you're flying under the radar. That's pretty much what it is. It's like, ah. I hit, no, I'm not, go? no, I'm not flying under anything. I'm right there in front of everybody. You know? I know, but people just mistake you for a garden gnome. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Well, whatever it is, they don't not welcome people here. There's you know, dark people here and a lot of, a lot of white people, mostly white people. But the dark people that are here, they don't get treated badly because of anything. They're just treated like everybody else. So, hmm. Well, it's a frequency thing. I think you know? so, yeah. And perhaps yeah. that area just has a, a certain vibe and people gravitate to that area because they vibrate the same level. It's probably got a lot to do with the lack of huge crowds. You, know? you tend to behave yourself m- more when you're around people you're accountable to, I think. You know, we're around a bunch of strangers and who gives a fuck? <sighs> Knock you in the head with a bottle. I'm a tough motherfucker. <laughs> but if it's you know, your, and, and your friend... You, there is always one in every crowd, and then you have the herd mentality that kicks in. But, I, I don't know. You know, man. I've been in crowds of larger than 150 people. Oh, yeah, me family too. Family reunions. Yeah. Concerts. Yeah. Oh, no, well, I mean... Family I've been reunions. A, I've been to <laughs> concerts that were the size of small <laughs> countries. Yeah. So, well... And yeah, then when I know, finally quit, it was the, like, what was the last show, I, big show I, w- I went to on purpose was uh, in 89, <laughs> when the well, dead the dead and Dylan went to Oakland. So I went, ah, I'll go to Oakland soon. But now it was too big. And it's, I had come to the end of all that. When I hit 30, I started to not like all the things I liked for ten, the last 10 years. Where all of a sudden they were losing their shine. <laughs> well, when my daughters took me to, to a concert in Denver, mm. I really did have a good time. And you know, oh yeah, I had a great I mean, time. It was Ellie King mm. and Joan Jett and Hart. Oh. And it really was a very enjoyable concert, and people were just having a good time. Mm. No, I didn't see anybody get unruly. You know, yeah, even neither did standing I. in well, line, yeah. people were, you know, people were chit-chatting with each other, standing in line and, and you know, going, can you take a picture of me with yada, 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 and, you know, stuff. It was just, it was a good time. Everybody was getting along, and there was a shitload of people there. Mm-hmm. And even when we were leaving, you know, even the traffic was was fun because, you know, you get this mass exodus from a concert mm. and downtown Denver, you know, in mm. the traffic and most of the people driving cars, you know, you'd, you'd be doing something. Well, okay, my daughters and I were doing weird stuff because, mm. you know, there was an awful lot of wacky weed going around. And so, you know, we were dancing out in the street, waving at people and hollering and just having a good time. And shit, drivers were waving at us and laughing and you know, everybody was just having fun. So I think it really kind of depends on the vibration of the gathering. You know, you're, yep. you're always going to have one Captain Assholio. You just nope. are. Nope. But if the vibration of the gathering tamps mm. that down, mm. that Captain Assholio ain't going to be able to to do his thing and no. they'll leave. I don't remember any of that because uh, there was a Dylan and Dead concert. There was no trouble. I don't. I don't I didn't see anything. Didn't hear about anything. The the Deadhead girls were out there with their signs. Got any drugs? <laughs> Shit like yeah. that. Well, and that's yeah. what I mean. You know, you got you got a good positive vibe going on, and a lot of times those that want to stir shit, they just pretty much get drowned out by the positive vibe. Hmm. Well, I noticed hindsight points me to the direction of I noticed I started to slow down 
in that 1989-90 era area of time. I traveled a lot still, but something calmed down, I think. Hmm. Well, hmm. I'm getting all these ideas from Larry and Rob talking with them on Thursdays. So mm-hmm. they're they're unexplored territory. So it sounds weird you're probably hearing it if you don't know what I'm talking about already. It means you haven't been introduced to it because it's uh, it's like a science basically. Well, it's not like oh, a yeah. science. It, it I would consider it truly a science. These things are exact. And they work a certain way, and they and they add up the answers to them, add up numerically in a certain patterns and mean shit. So it tells you, huh? And it's not like the Bible thing where you just believe the words mean what they're telling you. These things can be physically proven if you do the math and you go through the physical, uh, what would you call it, assembly of all the components to make it work. Then at the end you go, well, where's the on switch? Click. And then you see it. Right? Yeah. Okay, well, mm-hmm. we're we're dealing with something like that, but there's secrets involved in it, so you can't really do it. And part of the goal that I think Larry's trying to accomplish in the long run is so that everybody can do it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, Larry yeah. knows there's enough money in this to go around. Fuck. No reason to be greedy, please. But he wanted to give it away. Give it away. Like, like Tesla. Give it here, my mm-hmm. children. Have some electricity. This is how you make it. But the system that we live under doesn't want to do that. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, the rule makers are always the ones that are going to come out ahead until you stop playing their game. Step away from their game and uh, their rules. I can't. I'm well, married to Cirque. Yeah, well, and a lot of it is <laughs> a lot of it's just it's set up with all kinds of different backups. Yeah. So yeah, even yeah. if you have figured out multiple ways of how to get out of or get away from, they still yeah. got a backup to cover your ass. Yep. I guarantee that. But see, that's why I said just paint your prison the color you like. Because we're all in one to a de- to a degree, freedom Ooh, yeah. and and part it's all, of the physicality. But it's based on crap that you don't need to even really think about, like freedom. Who the f- what the fuck does that? It, it doesn't do anything for you. I'm free. No, you're not. Okay. What? <laughs> I'm free. Okay, you're free. Thank you. I mean, what does it mean to be free? I don't get it. Well. Mm-hmm. I think it means something different to every person. Me personally, I think freedom is the ability to be able to make choices and then act on those choices and deal with the you know, repercussions or rewards that stem from those choices. Mm-hmm. That is freedom. But freedom, freedom ain't free. A lot of people think that freedom is free. No, it's not. Freedom carries a shitload of responsibility with it personal responsibility. Wow. If, if you are willing to take personal responsibility mm. for your freedom, great. More power to you. Okay. By golly, it, it ain't free. I don't disagree with you on that, little missy. Whoa. But, you know, there's but just what? so many people out there that go, but free speech. Free, 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 free. Oh, <laughs> bullshit. <laughs> really? Personal. You that one yeah. way or another, it ain't yeah. free. Would you talk to your mom like that? There's your answer. Yeah? Yeah. If you have an answer to that question, <laughs> would you talk well, to your mommy like that, little boy? And if oh you say man. no, then you shouldn't tell me either. <laughs> but that's not the reality that we live in. No, and the sad reality is a lot of them do talk to their mom like that because their mom wow. allowed it to continue. And what you allow is what will continue. Yeah, I, me and mine bantered, but we had a, we knew it was other people that had to be told by her. No, no, I'm just playing with the boy. He's got a big mouth, you know, mm-hmm. and and insult me and still come out of it looking like, oh, you poor woman, you have to tolerate that monster, you know, when she'd be the one that started it. She taught me. Yeah. She was my mom. 
<laughs> so well, it, it was just amusing to get uh, other people protecting my mom from me. <laughs> that was funny. You know, and if someone is from the outside looking in, a lot mm. of times, especially if they don't understand the dynamics, they are going to get all up in your face because it shows you where their yeah, it. it shows you where their yeah. minds at. Nothing is innocent in this world anymore. Words cause violence. Now what? Ah, fuck. See, and with my girls, I I had basically the same kind of relationship with my girls that that I had with my mom. You know, we would get into disagreements, and there were times when they would get to be quite the shouting match. And then invariably, one of us would say, you know, I, me, my standard was you senile old bat, and hers was you <laughs> spoiled rotten little brat. And then next thing you know, we were laughing our asses off. About that really was a stupid argument. Yeah, and, and the arguments you brought up to support yourself. Good Lord, how lame was that? You know, something along those lines. So, And my girls and I, we disagreed quite a few times. But very, I, you know... Actually, not until after I filed for divorce were there any really harsh words. Hmm. And even even then, they weren't coming from me. <laughs> hmm. But you know, I under you know I get where they were coming from. Hmm. Doesn't doesn't mean I have to like it. But oh yeah, it's all that worked out. part, the like it part. Yeah, liking it's yeah. not necessary. You don't have to like shit. Lots of no. shit in life that I you know what I I go. I don't like that. You know what? Doesn't change it one fucking bit. <laughs> you no, know what? You Brussels know what? sprouts don't give one shit less that I don't like them. I don't want to eat those things. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't either. I I don't. So I don't. right. So but when I run into stuff like that with food, you know, what my wife has learned to do. What's that? Disguise and <laughs> chop it up so fine you don't know it's even there. See, ah, you, you don't. Teach an old dog new tricks, you, you, and you don't beat it. You just trick it. You just hide that pill in a peanut butter. <laughs> See, there you go. Uh, you don't have to. Man, the dog would beg for the pill for me because I'd wrap it in bacon or raw, raw meat or something. Swallow it whole. Yep. Yeah. Oh, I got to take Hannah to the um, cigarette store the other day, right? Mm-hmm. And. There's a buddy of mine, and he's got this dog, but the dog's loose, not on a leash. It's just the mm -hmm. most beautiful, well-behaved dog you ever met. And here I come with Hannah on the leash, and the two dogs want to meet. And poor Hannah is fine with this other dog until the other dog tries to smell her. Oh. So Hannah's the, a dog, but she'll smell your butt, but you ain't smelling hers. No, no, no. <laughs> so, she got all, yeah, she did the posturing and the growling and shit. And I'm like, oh, oh, here we go. And I'm pulling my dog away, embarrassed. And the other guy's dog is well trained. Come, boom, dog's back. Mm -hmm. See, there was never going to yeah. be a problem. It was just Hannah overreacting to the dog being a dog. So luckily for me, I know these things, or at least I think them. So they explain mm -hmm. what happens, and I don't get mad at nobody yet hurt something just life mm -hmm. what do you think of that mm -hmm. man huh? 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 um i'm thinking that i get a little bit skittish when someone comes up once to smell my butt too so i i'm kind of mm. on hannah's side mm. and you put a leash on me god dang it i'm going to be real concerned someone goes around to my backside and i got a leash on well that's never happened mm. and i hope it never does Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, there's a, a there's a wheelchair-bound lady with a black dog. Big, good-sized dog. Probably stands as tall as I do on his back legs. Bit that big. And mm -hmm. uh, I'm passing by her the other day, and the dog comes jumping at me to smell my hand and lick it. Mm -hmm. Well, I know aggression when I see it, so I knew the dog wasn't bum-rushing me. It's just big dog coming quick. So I just turned, put my hand down, and let him do that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Pat on the head. I'm on my way. I, I'm yeah. telling you, I've got the most boring fucking life. It's so cool. <laughs> Nothing happens. Just perfect. Well, there you go. Well, it's, it's all good. 
so far. Anyway, thanks for doing the dork table with me this week, Miss Mary. I appreciated it. Why, certainly. And the uh, RLM chatters, and especially Grim for giving us a place to do this crazy, wacky shit. Yes, yes, so. most definitely. Thank you, Grimmy, for all that you do. And, and thank you for letting me play along. Oh, come on. You're, it's boring without you is what it is. I, I like to have the show with somebody else. Anyway, uh. I'll see you guys in uh, Funny Papers. Later. Yeah. Hey, that's my line. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. Bye.